Okay, we are live. Hey, Business Inner Circle family, um, welcome to a very, very special, you can call it kind of a member spotlight. We're a special session today. We are here with the owner, uh, a fellow member of Business Inner Circle, and the owner of Wise Art Counseling, Jane St. Clair. Jane, how are you doing? Hello, everyone. Hi, Marshall. I'm good. How are you today? I'm well, surviving the snowmageddon good. here on the, on the West Coast. We didn't. Ex I don't think we expected it like this, but it's life. That is. Yes, exactly. Uh, and we as business owners know what it's like to just deal with what's in front of us. That's it. Yeah. Roll That's with the right. punches. Roll with the punches. Um, so normally we do these, we're doing these member spotlights once a month. This is not really a member spotlight, but because you are a member, we are going to spotlight you a little bit because the topic we're here to talk about today is so near and dear to both of our hearts, and that's mental health, mental wellness for us as entrepreneurs and as business owners. Mm -hmm. uh, but before we get into that, I'd love our members to get to know Jane and a little bit about your journey into your counseling practice, how long you've been doing it, where you're from, all that kind of stuff. So floor is yours. Okay, awesome. Well, um, so I think what ultimately propelled me to this career was my own uh, healing journey and process, uh, and really having the support through the years of wonderful counselors. Um, you know, growing up is not always easy. And um, for me personally, I had, you know, I guess I would say a fairly tumultuous childhood. Um, so between my two parents, there are seven marriages. Um, so, you know, I really was deeply impacted by all of that. Um, and it took a long time. I mean, I'm still working through some of the, you know, some of the stuff that uh, sort of the fallout from some of that. Um, I mean, as kids, we are just feeling our way through life. Um, so when we're surrounded by, you know, sort of discord, we naturally internalize that, you know, ah, something's wrong. And we really internalize that that thing that's wrong is, is us somehow. Um, Cause that's all we know. We're very egocentric when we're kids. So anyway, um, just flash forward to, you know, early adulthood, um, just trying to figure, find my way, uh, counseling sort of helped at that time, but not so much. Um, I moved all across Canada. I moved to the UK. Um, and I think I was searching and trying to find, you know, where's the place that's going to, where am I going to feel better? Um, you know, not really realizing that that's not, there's not a destination for that type of work. Um, it's really, you know, sort of internal. So then moved back to Vancouver and sort of started the process of reconnecting with family. And, you know, again, sort of did more work with counselors and, and reading, um, you know, self help, I, I'm a huge proponent of self help, I like positive psychology, so kind of just doing all the things. Um, and then, so the pandemic happened, uh, I was laid off, I was actually so this is sort of my third career, I used to work in the music industry, um, as a, an artist manager and publicist. Uh, when I lived in Toronto, and then I was a recruiter in uh, banking for 14 years um, in diversity and inclusion. Um, I have always had a real fondness for, um, well, uh, the people who have been othered, I suppose. So people with mental health issues, people uh, who've been through, um, you know, collective trauma, like Indigenous people, um, newcomers, you know, people that are maybe, you know, somewhat disadvantaged in um, looking for corporate employment, for instance, that was part of my job, um, was supporting those folks, um, and uh, loved the people aspects of both of those jobs, uh, but maybe always kind of felt like it wasn't quite right, uh, you know, for the long term. So anyway, I was laid off in 2020 and I decided to pursue counseling. So I uh, re-educated and um, started my counseling practice after doing a whole bunch of free counseling um, because in order to obtain a designation, you have to practice. Um, it's It's been a real mind bender, uh, you know, learning to be a counselor. 
uh, and also learning to be an entrepreneur. Um, so yeah, and that brings us to present day where I'm still, you know, trying to figure out all those things, building my network, which is how you and I connected. And, um, you know, and I'm sort of coming to recognize that that's going to be an on all of those things are, are lifelong pursuits, and it's going to be ongoing, um, which is actually one of the things I love about entrepreneurship is that it's all it's all encompassing. Um, so yeah, so that I think is maybe a possibly slightly too long snapshot. Uh, <laughs> but that's a little about how I sort of got here. No, it, it's awesome. I mean, it, everyone's journey is different, right? <clears throat> and um, I'm curious. So when what month were you laid off? I was laid off in September. Uh, okay. And I knew it was coming. So I had school lined up for November. Um, oh, okay. Okay. It was a really nice uh, time, time efficient um, transition. And so it's interesting, the timing of it all, obviously, a lot of people were unfortunately laid off. Uh, mm -hmm. And and you took advantage of that for your third career, as you call it. Yes. Um, and I mean, what a profession to, to go into. I mean, we're talking about a need out there. You know, we've talked mm -hmm. about this before, previously, you and I, about just the importance of mental health, mental wellness uh, for all of us, especially since the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And, and, and um, I guess the aftermath of, the past three years now yeah, and what's happening. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm all about um, business and life and slowing things down in order to speed up, taking care of ourselves like self-care. But, you know, I'm curious with you, what you've, as your practice has grown mm -hmm. over the last couple of years, what have you seen if, if anything different maybe over, you know, or a trend in the last couple of years, uh, whether it's with your own clients, clients that might be entrepreneurs, or just in your networking. And I, I know just so I can connect and collaborate, and people I've come in contact with, I've seen something, but I'm curious what you've seen regarding mental health. Yeah, great question. And I think what I've seen um, is more acknowledgement of mental health um, challenges, or, you know, a recognition that um, someone might be struggling. Mm. Uh, because when all of a sudden your whole world grinds to a halt, you're really smack dab in, in it, you know, um, and you don't have as many distractions as you might have once had, or, or we don't. Um, and so we really sort of then are confronted with what's really going on in our worlds, be it, you know, a very unhappy marriage, or really, you know, big challenges with communicating with our children or, or what have you, um, like, like you say, slowing down to speed up when we slow down, we're really kind of much more aware of what's going on. Um, and then I think big picture, I'm just seeing mental health moving front and center so much more, um, and way less stigma. Um, I have, you know, um, I think you and I have talked about before male mental health, um, has always been under underserved, under talked about, under, under, under. Um, and I've got so many male clients now that, um, you know, I think it's just becoming less stigmatized and, and those barriers are being broken down. Um, so those are probably the big things. And, and that's awesome. I mean, I know, uh, you know, the whole Bell Let's Talk days has really helped in that regard, uh, creating mm -hmm. awareness and mm -hmm. whole, and, uh, and other, like, especially athletes and celebrities have come out and said, I suffer from mental health. Yeah. I suffer from this. I suffer from depression, anxiety. Uh, and that helps sort of, I think, put a, a face to it, right? Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's not just me. It happens to everybody. Yeah. Um, and it's so wonderful when someone with such a big um, podium talks about it because so mm -hmm. many people then are able to hear the message that they might not have been able to hear through other channels. Yeah, for sure. I'm curious, um, as business owners, because we're all, I mean, one of the reasons why we do these Facebook groups is to create a forum, mm -hmm. right? So people aren't feeling alone and they can support each other. Mm -hmm. aside from a group like what we're in now 
uh, and coming to Connect and Collaborate. So for those of you who've never been to Connect and Collaborate, Wednesday at 11 o'clock Pacific, come and don't be alone in your business. Surround yourself with other, um, other entrepreneurs, like-minded people who get it. Because on a side note of it all, you know, as business owners, our significant others and our friends, if they're not business owners themselves, entrepreneurial themselves, they don't get the challenges we get. Mm-hmm. And we, a lot of us end up staying alone in our business and feeling isolated more and more, regardless of a pandemic or not, we're mm-hmm. just isolated. And that's when our, I believe, uh, our mental health can really take a bit of a hit mm-hmm. because we're just constantly with ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and and not, uh, not with others and i know the pandemic made it worse because a lot of people were stuck by themselves mm-hmm. um but groups are good what else would you say f- would be um helpful for i mean really it's not just business owners but this is the form this is the group we're in but mm-hmm. for us as as people to take care of our own mental health and maybe avoid the struggles that a lot of people seem to be facing right now Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, I mean, just to to touch a little further on what you mentioned, I mean, loneliness is as dangerous to our health as smoking. um, Mm. And isolation is actually quite uh, dangerous. um, in you know, especially for people that are struggling. So connection, I would say is is number one. Um, And if you're not really into making small talk about you know, random things, then maybe a business networking group is perfect because it is like-minded people. Um, But whatever it is, just to be connected um, is absolutely critical. So maybe going to the rec center or, um, I mean, gosh, I feel like there's courses and webinars of uh, so many descriptions all the time. I mean, even just tapping into some of those. Um, So connection, I would say, um, well, going back to the basics, I mean, I can't tell you how many of my clients can't sleep at night. Um, And, you know, being a business owner can certainly exacerbate the stress and anxiety. Um, So really dialing in on like, why can't I sleep? Um, It's really hard to manage a lot of things if we don't have any rest. Um, And then, you know, things like exercise or even just movement, not necessarily, you know, doing a bunch of cardio, but walking around the block, Um, you know, all those types of things are really helpful. I'm a huge proponent of meditation, but the very first thing that people will say is I can't do that. Like, I just, I can't stop all the thoughts. Um, It's really not about that. It's just about taking a little, a few minutes to be mindful of what's going on in your um, inner world. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, you know, meditation can be a great way. There's like a bazillion guided meditations out there. Um, I'll plug my favorite app, Insight Timer. It's free, and I think it has 150,000 guided meditations on it. Um, Insight Timer? Yeah, Insight Timer. It's just amazing. And, I mean, all the heavyweights um, of the meditation world are on there. Um, So you really just look for something where, you know, you like the voice. It doesn't feel like, ah, it's my school teacher, you know, telling me to relax or whatever. Uh, And then you just sit and listen to it. And if you can, you, you, you know, you just keep coming back to your breath. Um, breath work is huge. Um, a lot of, there's a lot of really complicated methodologies out there, like where you're really huffing and puffing. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't ascribe to those, uh, but simply taking six deep breaths before a call after a call, um, Mm -hmm. you know, like I'm obviously, uh, not all that accustomed to being on lives, for instance. So I can feel my heart, you know, sort of beating a little bit harder, uh, than normal. So, you know, I'm focusing on, um, in between, you know, thoughts and, and, and talking kind of taking a few breaths so that I can kind of re-regulate my nervous system a little. Um, so that's one that's super powerful. Uh, having fun, uh, is one that I would really recommend. Um, and I have to say when you and I did our, uh, session together the other day, you know, I was reminded of all the things that I love to do. And even I had to kind of sheepishly admit that I haven't been doing any of them, Uh, like riding my bike or, um, gosh, I can't even remember. I mean, doing more meditation was another one. Um, But we got to really shore up our baseline. And our baseline has to include 
uh, things for our well-being um, so that, you know, sure, life can get really busy and hectic, especially as an entrepreneur, but we, so we go hard for a couple of days, but then we come back to our baseline. We, you know, things go off kilter, we bring them back onto kilter um, where we're doing the things that are good for us and that give us some levity and, and some, uh, you know, opportunity to let our nervous system have a break. Cause when you're go, go, go all the time, which a lot of us are, you know, it's just, it's not sustainable long-term. No, a hundred percent. And it's, it, it's interesting. I know we talked about this uh, because you and I are very similar. I mean, we're very heart driven. We want to help people. We want to make a difference. So for people like us, it's, it's, um, and for other, for those of you out there who, are the same way and you really want to make a difference with others it's really hard to slow down it's really mm -hmm. hard to take time for ourselves right because mm -hmm. we feel like we're we have this calling to serve others and to make a difference mm -hmm. and it's almost like you know people around us could say okay you're you're working too long or too many hours take a break it's like oh i can't because this person needs me or even just being a parent Oh, God. I, I know you have, you have two boys. I have a boy and a girl, right? It's same thing. We're so mm -hmm. busy taking care of other people or aging parents, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's that oxygen mask analogy. We mm -hmm. just fail so many times to put it on ourselves first because we think we need to take care of everyone else mm -hmm. first. That's true. Right? And so I just wanted to put something out there. But okay, so there's a lot of things we can do preventative is that even a word? Preventatively? Preventatively? Yeah. It is a word. Yeah. Preventatively. Preventatively. Um, so what if people are watching this and, well, they are, hundreds of thousands of people <laughs> will be, we'll be watching this uh, and, and they're past that point. It's not preventative anymore. They're mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. They're at a low. They're really struggling in their business. They can't even focus on their business. They are feeling alone. Um, whether it's a deep depression or it's an anxiety that is just going into that depression, mm -hmm. what should they do? Ooh, great question. Uh, for those that have a nine to five job, uh, maybe they're entrepreneurs on the side, but they still work a mainstream job, or if they're fortunate enough to, you know, maybe be a small business owner or um, employee and have benefits, um, use them. Uh, if you are in deep depression and you're still slogging it out at work every day, no, stop. Yeah. Um, if you had a broken leg, you would take a leave of absence to deal with your, your issues, uh, your, your rehab on your leg, for instance. If you are struggling with your mental health deeply and you, you only you might know that, um, first you need to start consulting with your doctor and letting them know what's going on. And then you need to stop um, my doctor told me once, and I took a stress leave. Um, the only thing I could stop is my job. I can't stop being a mom. I can't mm. stop being a human. I can't stop, you know, trying to pay the bills, et cetera, in some fashion. Um, but she said, you know, you pay into these insurance programs for a reason. Um, so, so use that. And that really resonated with me and, you know, rehabilitating from depression, let's say for instance, or chronic anxiety takes time and effort. Oh. Um, it's not something you can just do on the side. So that's one thing. Um, so for those that don't have that option where they have to, you know, most of us sort of have to keep going in some fashion uh, regardless. And so it's to start thinking about your well-being as part of every single day not like, oh God, I'm going to knuckle through to the weekend and then mm -hmm. I'm going to do something to unwind. Um, it has to be part of every day. So be it, you know, create a little regimen for yourself. Like, oh gosh, I, I know I'm really struggling. So every day at lunch, I'm going to go around the block and breathe. Um, or, you know, I'm going to call somebody every day and connect with someone, or I'm going to start counseling. I mean, I have to I guess give a plug to counseling. Um, there's no better way to really, you know, have someone partner with you, uh, on your journey and mm -hmm. also, you know, in some way hold you accountable. So, you know, it's easy enough to say, I've got this, this challenge and I need to do this, this, and this, and this, I mean, when you're depressed and anxious, the very first things to not happen are those, you know, the things that 
you sort of know that you need to do. So a counselor can help you um, create almost like a little program for yourself and check in and see if you're able to, you know, be doing it. Um, what else would I say? I mean, all of the other things that we talked about, but really, yeah. I guess, first and foremost, really taking it seriously. Uh, you can go along on, um, on fumes for quite some time. We're pretty resilient, but at some point it's going to come crashing down. Mm -hmm. um, usually in uh, mental health challenges that aren't dealt with become physical problems, um, be it your heart, uh, heart related issues, blood pressure, um, you know, various things are caused by being under a great deal of stress on an ongoing basis. So, you know, yeah, I think the biggest overarching thing is to take it seriously because you deserve to feel better. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. you, well, you, well, you said something really interesting before a few minutes ago, you said, you know, if we had a broken leg, we'd go get it fixed. Mm -hmm. But so many times we, when we have a broken heart or a broken spirit, mm -hmm getting into a depression, mm -hmm. um, we just think, oh, it's going to pass, it's going to pass, or uh, nobody understands it. I mean, and that's, that's, that's complete crap. It, it is, because, yeah. um, and that's, I, I know we as society are making uh, really good progress with mm -hmm. the stigma about mental health, and we've come a long way from where we were even five years ago especially mm -hmm. 10, 15 years ago. I mean, I've grown up around it. I know all about it. Mm -hmm. um, it's a completely different world now, which is awesome. But people still, and I, I just know from my own journey, people still feel alone and scared. And it's great to surround yourself with other people and reach out to other people. But if it gets to the point, and the business inner circle is a great place to just um, be open Mm -hmm. and connect with people so you're not alone however if it gets to the point where it's a really affecting like if you can't get out of, the, out of bed in the morning then i would i personally would highly recommend yes you, it's mm -hmm. time to talk to your doctor you don't want to get to that point obviously mm -hmm. um and you want to do the things we've talked about to prevent that but if it gets to that point talk to your doctor seek counseling uh, because it can make a world of difference yeah. Right. Agreed. Yeah. And, you know, if you're not ready to do that, just tell somebody, Yeah. you know, because it can get, there can be pretty dire consequences if you don't um, take it seriously and, and seek help in some fashion. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to push back a little bit and I was going to say, and I'll retract this. I'm going to say it, then I'm going to retract it. I'm going to say, be okay. careful who you tell, but I'm going to retract that now because you need to help someone. But what I what I meant by be careful who you tell is make sure that you're telling people that have your back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for don't sure. Don't hide. So I'm trying, I'm not, I'm not saying be careful who you tell and don't tell anyone because you're going to be scared what they're going to, how they're going to react. Mm -hmm. But some people might not know how to react. And so, That's true. right. And if so, so this is my piece of advice. If someone says to you or to our listeners, uh, our hundreds of thousands of, of viewers, um, oh, just suck it up. Mm -hmm. Then that, then just move on. Go, yeah. to, go to someone yeah. else. Cause that's crap. Yeah. That was, that was obviously the wrong person to tell. That's the yeah. wrong person. Or, or people that jump right into giving you a whole bunch of advice. I mean, yeah. you know, normally what you need is for someone to listen. Yep. Um, and that's actually, you know, the point that you made um, about be, being careful who you tell um, brings to mind uh, a, a meme that floats around Facebook uh, from time to time. And it's something that I forgot to mention. Um, and it is before you diagnose yourself with depression or anxiety, first make sure you're not surrounded by assholes. Uh Bleep. Um, yeah. You know, who's in your circle? This is a really yeah. big part of, um, you know, what I failed to mention earlier with the various things you can do for yourself. I mean, if most of your circle, you can't talk to them openly, for instance, or if they're unkind or, you know, um, I mean, you know, if they're deeply in their own kind of wounded space and yeah. are, you know, self-destructive or, you know, there's you really have to watch who you are surrounding yourself with 
Um, yeah. Not everybody is a good influence on us. And we might be trying to maintain relationships with people who just aren't, aren't healthy and aren't helpful. So, you know, if you are facing a serious challenge um, or even a less serious one and you want life to feel better, it, it helps to really take a good look at who is in your, um, in your support network or who yeah. are your friends? Uh, is, it, is it healthy to be around family? Um, you know, a lot yeah. of families are deeply dysfunctional. I'll just, you know, throw that right out there. Um, so yeah. who are you surrounding yourself with? That's a really important consideration. And if you nurture a good, uh, healthy support network, you should have someone reliable that you can tell when you're hurting that will listen and that will give constructive advice, not the old like man up or put on your big girl panties or all the things that we yep. hear, like, you know, we don't need to hear that when we're, when we're struggling. Uh, no, hundred percent, hundred percent. And inner circle is so important. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I even posted, um, I think it was yesterday, day today. Yeah. Yesterday uh, about uh, limiting beliefs and the limiting beliefs are not necessarily about us. Mm -hmm right? It's not an us thing. It's a them thing. It's the people we're surrounding ourselves with are the ones that are giving us those limiting beliefs. They're the mm -hmm. ones who are saying, you can't do this. You're too young. You're too old. You're not experienced. Who the hell are you to, Jane, who the hell are you to start a career at your age to be a counselor? <laughs> I'm just saying that you're young, much younger than me, but you know what I mean? Like, totally. And, and so in that sense, like we have to go through and Jim Rohn has said a great thing create a quote or philosophy. Um, he said, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Ooh, nice. He said, your, your mindset is the average of the five people. Your income is the average of your the five people. <laughs> he said, so, you know, your health is the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you're trying to lose weight, why are you sitting around, hanging around with people who are uh, eating, sitting on a couch eating Doritos? Although I do like Doritos from time to time <laughs> um, or fast food, right? Hang yeah. around with people. Hang around with people who are living a healthier lifestyle and mm -hmm. are exercising and breathing and meditating and bike riding, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to just sitting on the couch having Doritos or cheesies. Yes, exactly. Now I really want some Doritos, though. I know. I know, right? <laughs> I know cheesy yeah. Doritos. I know. Yeah, uh, exactly. But yeah, no, that's a great point. I mean, we have to yeah. surround ourselves with people who. Um, are living a life that we sort of may aspire to, or, yeah. you know, like my circle is mostly all entrepreneurs right now. And I love it because we can all bounce ideas off of each other. We, we don't give doom and gloom advice. We're uplifting yeah. of each other, supportive, a hundred percent supportive. I, I really just don't have room for anybody that is not supportive. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and I would, go one further with the limiting beliefs. I mean, a lot of them are things we've internalized as tiny little kids. Mm -hmm. uh, and we think that we're, you know, sort of stuck believing those things forever. And we're really not. Um, yep. So mindset, you know, mindset work is another thing I might recommend. Uh, if you are down and all you do is watch the news. Oh, yeah. You know, oh. I've got news for you. You're going to feel more down. I mean, I watch yeah. one hour of news a couple times a week. I watch CBC's The National because I like to kind of know what's going on without too much sensationalism. But I feel not that awesome after that hour. Um, it's a trade off for me and that one that I think is okay to make because, again, I want to be informed. But, you know, bad news all the time is bad for your mental health. Mm -hmm. Also comparing yourself to others is bad for your mental health. So if you're on Instagram all day looking at, you know, like influencers who are a size two and, you know, live an idealized or are portraying an idealized type of um, body image and, and lifestyle, uh, it might not be that good for you to continue to do that. Um, any kind of comparison. I mean, people are showing pretty much their, their A game on mm -hmm. social media not the reality of their lives. So if you're consuming, you know, too much of that, it's going to have an in impact. Um, it's not, it's not reality. You mean, uh, <laughs> so they don't have these perfect lives. What do you mean? I, I, I mean, yeah, I, I don't think they actually do, yeah. but you know, they would certainly have you believe that, yeah. that they do. Right. Yeah. I mean, 
I think authenticity is becoming more uh, trendy, frankly. So you're seeing more and more people without makeup or with that just rolled out of bed or whatever, uh, who are being honest about their challenges. And that's, I mean, I think that's great. That's another way to relate. Uh, it's another point of connection to be able to be like, oh yeah, I, I relate to that. But if you're always comparing yourself to others who aren't necessarily being that authentic, um, that can be really, really detrimental. Uh, yeah, no, for sure. And I'm really glad you brought up the whole what to stop doing, like the watching the news. That's something that I work with my clients, my coaching clients on. And one of the things, yeah, definitely like limit the news, limit negative people. I used to work in my, before I went on a, out on my own 20, almost 29 years ago, I worked in corporate for a little while when mm -hmm. I was a little wee person. And um, but for three years, I was stuck in corporate. And I would come home every day at like three o'clock because I think it was or three thirty. It was early. Yeah, I think we were done at three thirty. I'd come home and I'd nap every day. Mm -hmm. I was like in my early twenties, and I was wondering why am I tired, exhausted? And it's because I was in an in an environment. I don't think any of them are in the group, so it's okay. Um, <laughs> of these people that was just sucking the life out of me every mm -hmm. single day with the whining and complaining. Mm. all the time they were complaining yeah. about their husbands i was i was the only guy in this all these women but men did men complain as well in okay. a different way but these were all women who were unhappy in this department mm -hmm. complaining about their husbands complaining about their their life and i would just come home and i was just the, like i heard it and i tried not to be part of it um and then i know with the pandemic with the news and not just the pandemic but just everything that happened everything's been happening in the world um, I have a piece of advice for people, actually. Instead of watching the news, watch, if you haven't watched it yet, watch Shit's Creek. Oh, yes. Okay. So I started watching it after when it, I think it won all the awards during the pandemic or right before or whatever it was, the Emmys. And um, I had heard of it, but I didn't watch it. And then the pandemic happened and I started watching it and it was, it made me feel good. Mm-hmm. It was just a feel good, you know, uh, there are a lot of shows like that. I'm not saying to sit on the couch and watch Dor and eat Doritos all the time and watch Shit's Creek. Um, once in a while is okay, but it's a feel good and it gives you like, it's about humanity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hilarious. I love that. I've watched it twice. It's so yeah. funny. And and now another piece of advice, that I just watched the first episode. So Eugene Levy, who I absolutely love, just came out with this new show called The Reluctant Traveler. Oh, and it is amazing. And so it's half hour and he goes around the world. Uh, I've only watched the first episode, which he was in Finland. And he's so funny, but it's so refreshing. And again, it just makes you um, just look at life differently, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Nice. nice. Um, yeah. So what, if you're going to watch TV or anything, watch that kind of stuff rather mm -hmm. than the news. Because the news yeah. is doom and gloom. You can be um, informed like you said, like on a weekly basis or something. So mm -hmm. you're not like have your head completely in the sand. But sometimes, you know, ignorance is bliss isn't so bad at times for us. Agreed. We need, to, we need yeah. to protect, we need to protect ourselves. For sure. I mean, we are energetic beings. So we're feeling yep. beings. And if we're always doing things that make us feel kind of bad and kind of down, it makes sense that over time that would sort of be cumulative and have a, an impact. Um, the other thing, uh, one other thing, and this is such a tough one because I'm still struggling with this, honestly, uh, is um, too much scrolling. Uh, I really struggle with not looking at my phone habitually. Mm -hmm. And, um, but that's another thing that is kind of, you know, this isn't necessarily uh, a talk about efficiency. Uh, it's more about mental well-being. But if you value efficiency and yet you spend two hours a day scrolling on your phone, you're going to feel sort of down about that um, mm. over time and, and really have a pretty good understanding that you could be achieving, you know, maybe more of your business goals if you could put your phone down more. Yeah, um, so that's, I think, worth mentioning. That's that's perfect. No, no, and that's something that's perfect. And I love that because we talk about that in our create our group program as well, mm -hmm. about just reducing the distractions. And we, listen, social media is a distraction. Um, but it also you can suffer, you can become sort of a the, the squirrel or the shiny object syndrome, you know, and get sucked down the rabbit hole of, oh, I'm just gonna go check to see my messages. And then an hour later it's like, 
okay, what just happened? I just bought something. <laughs> I just bought another program. I just bought these clothes, right? Or, or whatever, yeah. or, or, or I feel shit about myself and my business. Cause now I'm seeing all these people and they're, in, they're in Hawaii and they're look like they have it all made. Like, you know, back in the day it was the Tom Vu, um, you know, the late night commercials, infomercials with him on the yacht with all these women. He was a oh. real estate, real estate guy. <laughs> Trust me, I never, never like wanted that. Not even the yacht, the yacht, because the yachts. Who wants a, Who wants a sh- uh, yacht? Um, but interesting about social media, before we go, is because it can be very powerful. It's like this whole conversation, but this whole topic about Chat GPT, mm. if used properly, mm-hmm. it can be a huge resource for us. Mm-hmm. But it's also very dangerous. Yeah all the screen time we know about that i mean we we don't have to like screen time is just out of control especially mm-hmm. for our kids mm-hmm. um, oh gosh, yeah i remember my son said to me um and he was completely addicted to fortnite call of duty minecraft minecraft was actually good but all this stuff um and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling seeing all this stuff on instagram chat or what do you call it Whatever. Um, Snapchat. Snapchat and all that stuff. I'm aging mm-hmm. myself. <laughs> a Snapchat thing. Um, and I remember if we had a, it was uh, my in laws were over. It was a weekend and we weren't allowed, we didn't use electronics for like 49, 48 hours. Wow. This is about four, five years ago. My son was quite a bit younger. He was like 13, 14. And at the end of the blackout period, <laughs> we called it, um, he said to me, he said, you know, daddy, I'm happier than I've been in years. Oh. Right. And a combination of being around family, more family, Mm -hmm. not just, not just us, but Mm -hmm. in-laws and my brother-in-law as well. Um, Mm -hmm. But also just not being stuck on this device and looking at everyone else's world and life and um, the thoughts. I feel so bad for our kids. Like the thoughts Mm -hmm. of us too, but our kids are growing up in it. It's normal, normalized Mm -hmm. for them. Right. Yeah. And and uh, I know better because mm-hmm. I grew up without all that, mm-hmm. but we still get sucked into it too. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, and it's really significant for the kids for sure. Um, yeah. And that's so wise what he said. Like it feels yeah. good to connect with people. It feels good not to be staring at your screen. Yeah. It, it's refreshing. So. Yeah. 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 And it, it is. It's a. It is a catch twenty two when you use social media for your business. It is, you know, or it's just like all the things, the banking, the getting an Uber, like it's all, it's all meant for our convenience, but it can also, you know, really send us down a bit of a rabbit hole. Like you said, over, you know, buying things, overspending, it's just way too easy just to boop, 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 uh, order up stuff on Amazon or skip the dishes or whatever. So it is really a big, you know, it, it is something to look at and to consider. Well, and, and I think the biggest thing that I got out of, well, I've got a lot of this conversation, but even when we spoke last time, one of the things you said, you brought it up again today is about having fun. Mm. And the funny thing is about having fun. And I think our kids suffer from this. The pandemic was a killer for it for the mm-hmm. first little while because they couldn't do anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, but even for us as adults, forget the kids for a moment, us as adults, we get so like we get into a mood and what do we do? A lot of us, we go on social media. Mm-hmm. And we expect that's going to sort of, it's the, it's the kick. It's going to give us a little bit of a boost, right? Mm -hmm. But it really doesn't. We Mm -hmm. think it does. Um, But back in the day, in the old days, when I grew up, (laughs) uh, um, we didn't have that, right? Mm -hmm. We, so what did we do? We connected with people. We went out, we went to, I used to play outside. Like what a concept, play Mm -hmm. outside. Yeah. You know, my mom Crazy. had to, dra- my mom had to drag me in mm-hmm. from, you know, it was dinner time. Now it's, you have to drag them off the, um, the gaming stations or their, the Snapchat or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, God, I sound old these days, Snapchat <laughs> or whatever, whatever those kids do. <laughs> but um, no, this has been really helpful. This has been awesome. Oh, now. good. Yeah, me, for me too. And can I just add one point? Yeah, please. Yes. I mean, you know, we come down on our kids, but we're just as guilty. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, we have to model what having fun looks like. We have to model yeah. what going outside looks like. We have yeah. to model finding hobbies and actually doing them. 
Um, wow. So, you know, just to kind of, we really bag on the kids these days. And often we're like looking at our own phone and thinking, God, they're on their phone so much. Uh, you know, <laughs> we're, and we're doing the same thing. Yeah. But we really have to reconnect with what, what is fun for us. Um, and I think that is, that's a really big one. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's something that I know I need to, um, I sometimes forget mm -hmm. um, because I'm so busy focusing on the people around me mm -hmm. that sometimes I forget, oh yeah, I used to like this. Like when we talked about it, like you're biking, right? Mm -hmm. I used to, I used to love, I was talking to my daughter the other day. I used to love playing squash. That was my mm -hmm. thing. Oh, cool. Right? Yeah. Um, so I'm going to start doing that again. I have to Amazing. figure out where, but I'm going to start. That's, that's a, I, you can hold me accountable. I will. Oh, I will. And something like that ticks so many boxes, you know, yeah. connection, exercise, having fun, laughing, moving yeah. all the things. So, yeah. um, I was just thinking we should do a CNC fun day one time and go play laser tag or go bowling or something like just that, to kind of start yeah. making this a thing. Make it yeah, get outside or do something, uh, get away from the zoo, the zoom rooms. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, okay. So for people who want to um, get either connect with you just because they would just want to connect with you, which is mm -hmm. awesome because you're an entrepreneur uh, and, or they could maybe just need someone to talk to. How mm -hmm. can they get a, reach you? Uh, probably the best way is to go to my website, uh, okay. www.wiseheartcounseling.com and okay. counseling in this case is spelled with two L's and there's a link on there to book right into my calendar. So for a free 20 minute consultation, uh, it's really important to see if you're a good fit with someone. Perfect. Um, so that gives us an opportunity to do that. But uh, for even just for pure connection, I am emailable, jane at wiseheartcounseling.com. And uh, I am on social media uh, as well at wiseheartcounselingbc. So any one of those ways would be awesome. Uh, good. Awesome. And yeah, if you want to put your put it in the in the comment section in the group as well. Not not in this, in the in the Facebook group. Okay. Um it's interesting you said counseling with two L's. So I'm not, I, I guess I'm not the only one then because every time I have to look it up, am I spelling it correctly? Because I, I know there's a few different, a lot of people use the one L and I don't yeah. think there's a right or wrong. I, I don't know. I just prefer the two L's. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Jane, this has been awesome. Uh, I'm so glad that uh, you're part of our community and oh. that we've had this, had this opportunity. I am too, Marshall. And I'll just say from a personal perspective, connecting with you and the group has made a difference with my well-being. I, awesome. you know, just having a place to connect every week has, has been pretty significant. So I'm really grateful. And this was a very fun thank conversation. You. So thank you. My pleasure. And we will see you around, maybe even connect and collaborate. Yes, that would be wonderful. Perfect. We'll Thanks, everyone. Soon. Thank you, everyone. And we have another, we have actually a, a member spotlight coming up, I believe, in two weeks. More information on that. Reach out to Jane. Get your comments in the in the Facebook group comment section and for Jane. And she will get in there and she will respond back to you. Reach out to her and just have an amazing week, everyone. And reach out to people. Don't be alone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye.